This might be an old wives' tale as well, or an older version of this. The unhappy writers having more depth in which to write about, more, more in which to pull from, whereas the happy writers are just scratching the surface and it might be too much a movie of the week instead of um, something that pulls at your sort of emotional core and, and you put yourselves in the, the character's shoes. I don't know. Again, is that, does that, can we dispel that then? That you have to be unhappy in that sense. Yeah, you know, th this is a famous dilemma that people have been talking about for my whole lifetime. There was a, a book that came out years and years ago called The Drama of the, uh, Gifted of the Child. Gifted Child. Alice Miller. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and thank you for reminding <laughs> me of the author. But, but you know, it's a very, very interesting book, and it basically says that uh, writers should fear therapy because it might therapize, you know, t take away their, their angst from which came all of their, you know, their, their, their brilliant ideas. And, and it's just, it, it's simply not true uh, because there's just too many examples of productive writers who have plenty of angst. And one of my favorite examples is Stephen King who published in my magazine, DreamWorks. Uh, we sent out a letter to artists all over the world, including him, and said, could you please tell us uh, whether dreams have any influence, you know, on your creativity, and if so, give us an example of a dream and, and, a, and a creative work that came from us, for, came from it. So Fellini sent us a cartoon that he dreamed in the middle of the night that led to Eight and a Half, his movie Eight and a Half, and we got great stuff from all kinds of people. And Stephen King finally, uh, six months later, after everyone else, sent us a very short letter and he said, this is my constant nightmare. I am sitting alone in an attic, typing away, and a little door on the floor of the attic opens, and a hideous face comes out of the door, and I start typing as fast as I can, because the faster I type, the more the door closes, and if I slow down, you know, the face keeps coming out. And then he says, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a, an example of what you're talking about, because he has plenty of angst going on. He has plenty of terror and fear and dark things in his, some of his most brilliant works like The Shawshank Redemption and, you know, uh, The Shining. A and he's not an unhappy writer. Like he's, he knows that he needs to put the time in every day. He, he's figured it out and he's prolific and so on. So there are just too many examples of balanced writers, let's call them mentally balanced writers. One of my favorite statements from the world of art is Salvador Dali said one time, the difference between myself and a madman is that I am not mad. And I love that because only an artist who knows how close sanity is to insanity knows what that means. You know, like he's, he's one of those madmen who isn't mad, whereas a lot of other bad men are mad. And, you know, okay, they kill themselves or they kill somebody else or whatever. Um, so it's, it's all about knowing yourself. I mean, it's all about figuring out how your mind works and proving it and testing it until, you know, before you know it, you look back and you go, my God, I've written, you know, all these books, I have all these things going on, and I don't think I'm crazy. And on the other hand, I don't think I'm sane either. You know, it's, it's like you just figured it out and so you it doesn't mean you're not having dark spells it's just that you you kind of look at your dark spells from the outside instead of from the inside you know they it, it's very common in meditation and yoga to understand that you can either be inside yourself all the time and drive yourself crazy by letting your mind run it you know what's going on or you can like stay above your mind and look down on all these thoughts going by and all this stuff and recognize that you, the one looking, is in charge, not all the thoughts. And, and Writer's Time has a whole theory about how the creative mind works that way, where there's what I call the managing editor looking at the, the fight going on inside your mind and realizing that this can be controlled if, if you trick the two sides of the mind and force them to work together. Uh, that's kind of what it's all about, to become productive and happy at the same time.
and it you know seems to work for a lot of people.